Hello, this is Geo Techlan, and today I'm going to be taking a look at GNOME 42 Alpha. Although technically I'm running the GNOME OS through a virtual machine. And since I'm running this through a virtual machine, the performance may look a little bit laggy here. Now as for changes coming up in GNOME 42, it's mostly going to be about the new dark mode and the port of plenty of apps to GTK4 and lib Adwaita. And so let's start there. Let's actually start with the file manager that has been recently ported to GTK4 and it is looking gorgeous in this dark mode here. Interesting thing to note here is that it seems that blue folder icons have always looked really good with a dark theme. One of my favorite themes is what is used on Solus, which is the Plata Nowhere theme with blue folder icons. And I think even Mac OS might use some combination of that as well. And so overall, this new lib 8 Weta theme with its dark mode looks very nice. And then so speaking more on dark mode, go to the settings, which also has been ported to GTK4 using the lib 8 Weta theme. And of course, you can toggle between dark and light theme here. Now, I know there's been a lot of controversy over the theme lib 8 Weta. Again, I still wish that there was at least several dark variants, but I got to give the GNOME team credit for creating a really good dark theme. But I do wonder, you know, as I look at the new text editor app, which also is one of the few apps that has been ported over, looks really nice, modern, gorgeous. And this particular app has the ability to toggle from dark to light. It also has preferences. And there's variants of the light theme for this app. You know, there's a sepia version. And this makes me wonder if lib Weta could be configured down the line to support different light theme and dark theme variants. That would be an interesting thing there. Let me go ahead and switch this back to dark mode just so you can see the dark mode variants here. You get this sort of solarized uh, option and all these various dark mode options back to to the GNOME Software Center here also has been ported over and it is looking good. This is probably the best app store on Linux. And I kind of wish this was the standard that there weren't different multiple app stores now. Since this one's so good, I feel like it would be nice if this one was the universal app store. But let's take a look here. If we take a look at this hash brown app as an example, it was actually GNOME 41 that introduced this new software center. But here it is in action on the new theme. And then there's this cool app that I noticed called GNOME Health, which is really cool because GNOME itself, there's a mobile version called Fosh and seeing all these apps like a health app that would pair along nicely with a Linux or open source smartwatch. The fact that it's that they're sort of building this is a good sign because you know this is designed to really to be paired with a smartwatch and it's already looking good and the one cool thing about this dark theme is that it looks a lot nicer a lot more modern and I think it would look good being the default theme with the Fosh GNOME based mobile UI. You also have the shell itself having been ported over. So now if you click on the time, it looks nice and beautiful. The text seems to be well contrasted with the dark mode. It's like a brighter shade of white. This looks very nice as well here, as you can see. Now, of course, there's many other apps that have been ported over. And then there's also some apps that still haven't been quite ported over. Here, the music or rhythm box doesn't appear to be using lib 8 Weta calendar you can see it already looks very old just compare the two this one just looks so archaic compared to this modern looking window here there's also this R note app i wanted to check out which also seems to be using gtk4 and lib 8 weta this app is built with rust and it's a very simple and very easy to use painting software and it just goes to show how beautiful gtk4 is because look at all these buttons here this is just a really premium look here with this new UI. This just looks just as good as anything you see on Adobe. And interestingly enough, this app also lets you toggle between light and dark. I feel like in many ways, it's already ready for use on a tablet even. Of course, drawing apps have to improve and maybe even be compatible with some sort of open source universal 
stylus that has hopefully a lot of pressure points and that people can use um, as an alternative to the iPad OS and the Apple Pencil. I see the groundwork being laid for that type of uh, use case. So again, GNOME 42 just seems like a very well made desktop environment. It's gonna look good on the Fosh mobile version. It's gonna look good on a tablet. The main thing I would change about vanilla GNOME out of the box would be to add an option to enable the minimize and maybe even the maximize button by default and enable the dock by default just to accommodate new users coming into the Linux desktop. I talked about this in another video I made about GNOME, how about how they can take over the Linux desktop world. But yeah, overall, I'm really liking the direction that GNOME has been going. I think the future looks bright for GNOME and just for the Linux desktop ecosystem in general. But let me know your thoughts. What do you think of GNOME 42, the dark mode, and the new GTK4 lib 8 way to dark theme? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LibraPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below.